Hey, we're back. Welcome to part five. There's uh, four rock formation spires, all carved, ready to go. Um, went in with a couple different tools on the last two. Um, you see, you got these big indentions in them. I'm using the um, freehand router, and you can see the wire. You can make that any kind of um, shape you want it. So what I'm doing now is I'm working on use that couple other last two pieces I got a functional hill two inches tall on an eight inch by eight inch and I believe this is probably what about uh, a little over nine inches by probably four and this is like a little for something for cover you can put a tank behind it or something like that and what you can do with this is just like the way I shaped it is take little edges out and you can just go in there and add little textures and take out chunks So this just kind of adds some really good interest to it. And uh, let's see, we'll take the, uh, the hill, let's see what we can do with that. I'm trying to maintain some of the surface areas, so I can put miniatures on this, but we want to add some detail to it too. And we can just do different directions with this too. This is really a cool little tool. and stuff like that. I'm going to come through here with the engraving tool and do those um, sediment styrations or lines. And also we're going to come in here with the uh, dry decks and um, fill in the, the edges to give it more of a realistic look. But this is, a, you know, functional hill is not going to be very realistic in 40K. So that will give you the idea of what I'm doing. And then we'll come back with the um, engraving tool and show you what we're going to do with that too. Thanks for joining us. Okay, we're back. We're going to start um, putting in the uh, filler. This is some um, Drydex um, spackling. And it's got a dry time. It goes on pink and it turns uh, bright white when it's done. And what we're going to do is just fill in all these edges here to make them the transition into the board look a little bit better. And also I have this, you remember the uh, communications uh, base that was a band that's going to be for the uh, a piece of train and also for the um, Orc Blood Axe Battle Wagon. I'm going to do some transitioning and filling in with the rocks and stuff like that to make it a little more solid. And uh, obviously the spires will be done. And then we have that little hill right over here. And the other tools that we're going to be using is obviously have gloves, uh, a little water to spray on if we need it, water to clean the, uh, we've got a set of four of spatulas from the dollar store. Very easy to use and ha handy, some paper towel. It obviously, uh, the um, dry decks itself. So what I do is just, Grab some of this out of here and start smeared it on like that. And 
And also, that's another reason I wear gloves is the fingers work really good too. Just to get that in there. And also, um, if you need to smooth it out, wet your fingers and it smooths out really nicely. And also, if you made any mistakes with your uh, cutting tools or uh, hobby knife or anything like that, this will be good to patch it this time. And this is not for texture or anything. This is, um, well, you guys, it could be some texture. This is, but um, right now, I'm not using it for texture. There'll be sand on the bottom of this when we're done. Um, after this step, we'll sand it and glue it. Then we'll goop it, and I'll protect it, encase it, and give it a little bit of weight to it. take this outside. It's a really nice warm sunny day here in Northern California and uh, that sun will dry this stuff right away so we can get on our next step. I got some uh, play sand from uh, Home Depot I believe or Lowe's one of the two. That's the, the two major stores we have in our area. We also have like a local Ace Hardware for emergencies and stuff that's a little more convenient to get to. So that looks like it's about done. So that's so simple, this step. And um, see what the errors we want to do. But I like all the, you know, nature, Mother Nature is never really perfect. So these little divots and stuff on this thing. And this is a nice little piece of terrain. It's not too big, but you can hide a nice size tank behind it. <laughs> or a, a squatter too, I think. So I'm going to get uh, back to the rest of these, just wanted to show you that real quick and um, we'll come back and show what it looks like with all the uh, um, spackle on there, I'll test you in a fit, thanks. Hey we're back, everything is uh, got the drywall patch on it and I wanted to show you something really quick, a little technique. Um, see how these, that I took the water in my gloves and smoothed it all out, let it dry for a little bit the gloves a little wet and keep some of the texture on them from because they're all dried up and, and, and uh, goopy and just slap it with your finger a little bit and, um, and also the gloves kind of bunched up so it gives a little bit of a, a little texture I don't know this one might be too dry already so this little water and just go in there Yeah, it's a really uh, dry day today. This is a little harder on this one. Uh, not too bad. So that's it for this uh, little uh, section. Um, after this, we'll let this dry. Then we're going to hit it with the PVA and some sand and get down to some fun. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks again. Hey, a real quick update. Um, all the uh, spackling is dry. Now I'm starting to hit it with some uh, watered down PVA glue. Got a big old gallon of it over there from Walmart, I believe. Watered it down using this, these cheap little, let's see if you can see these, little metal acid brushes. You can get them at hardware stores or Harbor Freight, really cheap for a pack of 10, I believe. And I uh, just got a Tupperware lid to catch the sand, which is in a little plastic tub with a plastic spoon. Gives a little more control. And then you see the two pieces that are done over there. Uh, they're ready to be transported upstairs to my deck to hit the sun to dry a little bit faster. And then um, we'll go from there. Thanks for joining me. Hey, we're back. Everything is dry. I love this time of year, especially if my deck just gets direct sunlight and dries everything in minutes instead of hours. So uh, we're going to do the goop now. I got a bowl going. Um, as you see in there, I got, uh, looks like maybe half cup of... Um, Caulking and equal amounts of the glue. This is all eyeballing. Right about there. Okay, let's try that to start with. Let's use a spatula. Stir this all up. Probably need a lot more of this, just this, this, but we'll start with this and go from there. 
You really want to get this to mix first, then hit it with your water and plaster. Um, I'm going to hit this with some more caulking and more glue, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. He's kind of doubled the ingredients. I'm just going to use some of the old glue water from the other stuff. Might as well save uh, natural resources. Get it sloshing around. Now where is my... I'm going to drop of this. This is the stuff from, uh, this is for um, making uh, resin and, and silicone. Put a little bit of that in there, see how that works. Nice. Now, see that was like just a few drops. Really just changed the color of all this right away. It's a nice gray color. And also the gray we might darken a little bit more. We can see what our coverage is too when we're hitting the uh, white styrofoam that we're not going to miss anything and have any styrofoam in case we want to spray prime it later on. This will protect it. Do a little more. Get one more drop of black. Let's just do one, two drops. Watch this. One, two. Really nice how this kind of mixes in there nicely. Stone gypsum. This is plaster that's reinforced with a fiber. Uh, you might notice this when we're done with it. I don't know if they mix like this. We use it straight. You see, like little hairs come out of it, but it makes it very strong. Let's see if that should be enough. We might add some more water to it. I'm going to use a cheap dollar store paintbrush that we can throw away afterwards. And this might obscure some of the details. So we're not going to make it too, too thick. I think this is going to be perfect. Let's scrape down these bowl edges. We could also use um, the palette knife too because uh, we don't want to get um, brush marks. So let's see, we're already here. Then we'll uh, start putting this on. slap it on at first and then we can smooth it out later and also we kind of don't want to lose all the, the texture on the bottom but see how it's still holding the texture and if we have to we will come back with more sand but this will be just another layer of protection and I hope we don't have to come back with anything else it's be nice if this is all sealed in ready to prime and paint Areas just kind of tilted up so the mix gets in there. And this is stuff's set already. This is cool. So um, that's going to be it for right now. I'm going to uh, get all these done and I'll come back and show them to you. Then we'll take these outside in the sunlight and get this stuff done and ready to paint and get a game board going and maybe do some pretend bat reps or something like that. <laughs> Don't have a complete army painted, but um, we will soon. But we have to have a nice board to play on before we have an army, don't we? Guess not. I just like to. 
So uh, that's going to be it for right now, and we'll see you in the next uh, section. Hey, uh, we're back real quick. Um, this is what they look like gooped and ready to go out and hit the sun and get them dried out. Uh, you can see some of uh, the gravity is affecting it. I thinned it out a little bit more because I was losing detail. So there's a trade-off between, you know, having it slide down and um, I had to keep it. kept pooling down in the sand, so I kept having to dab that off. And actually, I almost ran out, so it was good for the uh, uh, display piece. I almost ran out of that, so I kept just taking it from uh, each other pieces on the bases so they didn't lose all that uh, sand texture on the bottom. And there's also another thing I could have done is do a goop on this, on the uh, main structures, then do a goop mixed with sand. That's another thing I've done before. But I wanted something a little bit quicker, and um, uh, maybe next time I'll have to try it the other way. You can see some styrofoam showing up on some of them, but it's okay. We'll hit it with some uh, couple coats of the black latex, and then we'll go from there. So uh, next time you see these, uh, they'll be ready for paint. So this will be the end of uh, part five. As usual, thank you for joining me, and we'll see you in the next uh, part. Thanks again.